We're now going to have a look at trying to break down how to evaluate a Morton's neuroma bursal complex on ultrasound. And how we're going to approach this is a series of videos looking at different views. And this hopefully will enable us to give you the best way to have a look at how we would actually perform these scans of the web space region, which is ultimately what we're looking to explore. So to start with, we're going to have a look at a very basic view, essentially, of the dorsal view of the web space. And we're going to look at the third, fourth web space. That's the most commonly affected area for this condition. I'm going to place my probe onto the dorsal aspect of the foot. And I'm going to start by scanning the dorsal aspect of the metatarsophalangeal joint, which is just here. And I can see that already my depth is fairly well optimised. I could probably reduce it a little bit more. Um, I don't want to reduce it too much because you'll lose it on the video. Um, but we can see here very nicely the um, proximal aspect of the joint, which is the metacarpal. And then we can see the phalanx on the right of the image. And we can see the extensor tendon on the dorsal aspect of that. Now what we're going to try and do is just move our probe very, very slowly and slightly across, just keeping that joint centred in the image into the web space. Now at this point, it's not uncommon for you to need to reduce your frequency to try and achieve a greater amount of penetration. And actually I need to reduce my depth slightly there and then reduce my frequency again to see the web space in its entirety there. And I'm looking for an anechoic compressible structure adjacent to a more fusiform hypoechoic area, uh, as you can see in the uh, image in the video clip here, showing what we would expect to see from a dorsal perspective when looking for a Morton's neuroma complex. Now, the other thing just to be aware of um, is that the dorsal view is often a, a more beneficial view in some ways because you get less attenuation of your ultrasound beam and by that I mean it doesn't weaken as much as you're scanning this region. When you go through the plantar aspect of the foot uh, the ultrasound beam weakens or attenuates more and you therefore struggle to get the penetration and we'll see that to some extent in the subsequent techniques uh, in a moment. But that is how you can scan from the metatarsophalangeal joint across into the web space from a dorsal perspective. Just also be mindful of the pitfall here that sometimes if you have got an effusion of the metatarsophalangeal joint, that will run slightly across into the web space and it can give you the potential for a false positive anechoic or dark compressible fluid that you might mistake for a bursa, but it could be to do with the metatarsophalangeal joint. And so a way of you just working that one out for yourself is that you can then actually go short on the metatarsophalangeal joint and see if you can see any effusion tracking round and into the web space. But that's how you can do a very basic view from the metatarsophalangeal joint into the web space. So we've just seen how to look at the dorsal aspect of the web space with the foot flexed, we're now going to have a look with the foot less supported. And this enables us to actually dynamically affect the image that we're trying to create. So we're going to do exactly the same again as we did a moment ago. So I'm going to scan the dorsal aspect of the metatarsophalangeal joint, which is here. And again, my frequency is currently set at nine, so I'm getting a good amount of penetration. I can probably reduce my depth a little bit here, but not too far because I then will not have the required depth when I actually transition into the web space. And then what I'm going to do is just roll my probe into that third, fourth web space into this area here. Now, I've got a nice view here. and This, this shows you quite nicely as well, I think, the challenges of, of highlighting this condition. You've got a mixed appearance here of grayscale on the screen for the web space. And you can see the plantar aspect of the foot at the bottom of the image, that white line which we can see here. What we're looking to do here in a real life situation where we would have some fluid perhaps in the centre of the image, uh, an anechoic or dark uh, black area of compressible fluid, is this 
position where you can now start to apply a bit of direct pressure with your fingertips to push up and influence the image that you're actually looking at will enable you to, to conclude that you've got a bursal or compressible bursal effusion. Um, so this is a nice one to add in. So moving from the foot, flex, the foot fix sorry, on the plinth and scanning the dorsal recess to then come into the foot being out straight and not supported as such, but enabling you to access the plantar aspect and apply a pressure up in a dorsal direction to compress that web space to see if you can elicit uh, any compression to any anechoic regions of fluid in there uh, or to manipulate the image to give yourself more information to make a conclusion. Hopefully that's helpful. We're now going to have a look at a planter view of the third, fourth web space. So again, I'm going to have the patient sit on the bed with the foot fairly relaxed here. You don't want the patient tenting the foot up because you need to be able to manipulate this one and maneuver the probe around. So I'm going to place my probe on to start with. And the first key thing is to make sure you're on the right web space. Um, it's easily done to, uh, to get onto the wrong one. So start off is my advice right over on the fifth. And you can see that with the very clear dome shape appearances of the metatarsals uh, in front of you on the screen. We know that we've got the fifth, we've then got the fourth, and if we just move our probe across, we've then got the third. And that therefore then, in the gap in between, is the third, fourth web space. Now don't forget that we've changed the orientation here. The top of the image is now uh, the planter aspect of the foot. And so when we then do what's essentially known as a sonographic molders click and squeeze these two metatarsals together, if there was a Morton's neuroma in there, firstly, you might feel a click. Secondly, the patient may complain of pain, but also you may well see a hypoechoic structure essentially pop down towards the plantar aspect between those two white domes or between the two bones in the web space. So I'm squeezing them together here to see if I can elicit any response, but also to see if I can see or pick up any actual changes of a neuroma popping down towards the plantar aspect. <laughs> 